Good day to fly. Good day to fly a kite. I did bring one. Oh my God, we are gonna do that. I'm so glad we should. I should have. I should have brought a few kites. It's really windy. You have too much work to do. I'll take the kids out and do it. Yeah, well. You get back to work. Right here. So what do we go have going here. on here? This uh, is it. Actually, go up a little bit, Blake, because yeah, right there. Because you kind of want it in the middle of that board. Right here. Yeah. So that's it, folks. We're putting the price on it. It's going to be 200 <laughs> Yeah. And what? What was it? 80000 What are we unloading this? It's a deal. Uh, $278,000. Okay. This place is yours. It's far because it's plastic, so it might just... I think when we get the permanent siding, we go with the nice raw iron, you know, numbers. Dollar store special. Yeah, well. I'm just kidding. Actually, no, I got this at the hardware can store. I do it? Can Would I you do like it? to do one? Maybe Blake could could show you how to do it as a big brother. Yeah. Hey. I'm sure he would. Hey, there's our new lady. She's going to hate me in about two years. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, again? Can I put on the seven? This lady and her purchase. I met the post office, um, like the physical post office for our barn location. So I told her, I said, stay tuned. I said, you're gonna see a lot more of me in a year. She was excited. She knew exactly where no, our farm was and everything. Letter. Well, like, don't mess with those postal letter. people. No. no, here. Don't miss. You'll be hitting my fingernail. Good. Wait, wait, wait. Now we'll get the other one in. Me. And then and then Emma can do the... That. Actually, can you hold that there so I can make sure? No, in the middle, like this from the side so I can see. Step this side. Mm. Lay your hand flat again so I can see it. There you go. Nope. Uh, well, no. Oh, off. for crying out loud, the barn yeah. isn't even straight. Okay. What's gonna don't, happen is when the guy comes don't back. Don't mess with my OCD, man. Yeah. Hey, the guy's gonna come back, lower the barn, and we're gonna have to re-level the numbers. Push, just, just tack the bottom one in a little so Emma can do some. Right, yeah, leave it. Good. Ooh. Don't go too far, it'll crack for sure. Or the barn will fall down. <laughs> Don't hit it too many times. You're going to end up calling in all the woodpeckers. Do we have a ladder she can... can you, yeah, she can reach that. Perfectly plastic, perfectly visible. Actually, I kind of like that I didn't do white because I think black is kind of a little inconspicuous, but you can see it. Well, all we need are three zeros, and this place is on the market. <laughs> Wait, isn't that the amount we put into it? Uh, it feels like it. Oh, please. Emma's going to get the final screw in for the rest of her lifetime. Here we go. You ready? Final you feel screw. confident, Emma Lou? Final screw. Hit it one good time right now. All right, Missed. Make sure you hit the nail. There we go. Good. Good. That's good. There you go. Whoa, whoa. Good job. So we officially have an address. We do. So I can expect a bunch of boxes with smiley faces <laughs> to be showing up pretty soon. With or trees on the side or some type of a plant. Actually, mo most of the boxes that show up say, do not freeze with a penguin. Well. That, that's what will show up. Great. Mm -hmm. Gotta wait for the drill sergeant to show up. Or Chief, can you? What do you think? Right under the window, buddy? Exactly under the window. Yeah. The question is, is it going to be high enough? All right, what do you think? It's upside down. It's not. It's upside down. Huh? It's upside down, the logo. Oh, sorry. I told you that. Well, how am I supposed to know? Busy, busy on a Saturday. Yeah, a little bit. Perfect. As long as. Oh, wind it up with this uh, 
window, window. yes. Oh, man, you don't want to see this painter's crack. <laughs> the viewers. Can't be any worse than a plumber's crack. Uh, yeah. I forgot to caulk it. Come on. All right. But it's got to go a little farther to the right, I think. Oh, really? Yeah. Don't you worry. My family were sign painters. I know what I'm doing. How are you gonna fill it to in your pocket? Just like that, son. All right. Beautiful. Yes, it is. That's a little low on the left. Oh, I got a nail there. You need a hammer? Uh, need a uh, hammer? Not if you turn and look the other way, I don't. Maybe All you should right. move the wet. Oh, there you go. All right. Higher. Hold on. No, I think that's good. All right. Ah, uh, well, maybe. I can't tell. It's Let me tell. perfect right there. Just, just nail it. I'm sure it's beautiful. Daddy Pierre's gone. It died. Thanks for putting that thought in my head, Evelyn. <laughs> Nothing like a little family encouragement. Yeah, hey, at least you'll have it on video to relive this. Well, you should memory. you should move the ladder to the left a little. Oh, come on. It's good. Okay, perfect. Good. All right, I gotta lower the ladder, but we're in business. Now we just need this little barn to like keep standing. This may actually hold the barn up. It's four screws. Possible. So, I like it. What about that? That looks like it's starting to fade. What? This sign right here. That's not starting to fade. Is it? No. Oh. All right, let me get this done before I call going up next. something happens. Yeah. Oh, now there's no wind and I'm sweating and now our kite flying capabilities are going to be diminished. I think it'll That's come good. back. So all you need now is somebody to go past on the parkway with a... Emma, you want to take a drive and we'll see you. A pair of binoculars, you'll be good. I know. Here, I'll go, I'll go with you. Are you going to be done when you're done with this? What? Are we going to go home when you're done with this? I don't know. I'm kind of enjoying it here today. It actually turned out to be a halfway decent day. Oh my God, it was so cold this morning. I think it was just the wind, really. So what are you watering? What is this? Well, you missed it. I helped you do it, so I that's know. why I missed that, it. You're gonna film at the end? Well, what do you want me to do? Try to film while I'm working with a sledgehammer? Yes. So today, what we are gonna do, I ordered from Vermont Willow Nursery. Um, for the first time, we're gonna try to plant um, pink willows. So these, this is Mount Aso willows. It's kind of interesting because you basically get these little rods that look like this and they need to root. So they're in the ground, they will root, mother nature will help them. Looks like you have an awful long line for water. Water? Yeah, huh? the plants. Looks like they're lining up to get watered. Next week, like and maybe snow, because we can't just have a normal spring. We have to have a spring, then a winter, then a second spring, then a winter. Then. So all of these plants were in the barn until a couple days ago. Yep. So is there a certain day you're going to bring them out? Like, why did you bring them out a couple days ago? Because they're ready to start growing. Like the day lilies at my house are all up and starting to grow. And they're a little waxy. Like day lily leaves are pretty thick. So they, they can tolerate a lot. So there it's time to wake them up. They're they're gonna get rained on and we're gonna see which ones made it. They, they all have like some green still left in them. 
So we're going to revive them a little bit and um, it's normal growing season now for them. Like they're starting to come, wake up naturally. The only issue is these are in pots where the other ones are in the ground. So these are going to get a lot of fluctuation. If we get that five inch snowstorm on Thursday, these have to go back in the barn probably. Or we could just let them be insulated and they're pretty tough. Day lilies, you can't really kill them. They're pretty, they're pretty tough cookies. So, I mean, look, most of <laughs> these were ones that I started last year and never got planted. These were seedlings from 2022. They are root bound, but guess what? This guy, I don't even know. He even lost his tag. This will be a surprise. I have no idea what this even was, but He's alive and he just wants to be seen and he just wants a chance to bloom. But he's got a mature root system on it. And as soon as this sucker goes in the ground, he's gonna put up a bloom. So I have to give him a chance. Yeah, he looks Actually, like he's root. Like this guy looks really. Root bound and gagged. But look, like the roots are firm. Are we alive in here? Yeah, look. See the little green? They're starting to come alive. So guess what? Not all is lost. So that's you know, probably going to be one of the hardest things for you is to just get a feel for this farm yeah, and figure out yeah. where you're going to put your perennials mostly. Yeah, well, the perennials, I'm actually thinking that the perennials are going to go down here because um, it's going to help with the soil erosion and it's going to help like they kind of the roots will be in the ground and they stay there. And it, it just will make it easier for me to have them here. So I think I'm going to have, I think I'm going to designate this location for perennials and I have a bunch coming and then this will be kind of annuals. And then way in the back is where I'll do a lot of my cut flower production. The problem, the only issue with that is I, I want to see the flowers here. Like perennials only have a specific bloom time once throughout the season, generally. Some are longer blooming than others, but um, in general, you only get one bloom cycle. So I kind of want lots of color all season long for views and, you know, to make it look pretty. And but I'll have that with the dahlias. So maybe I'll just keep some dahlias here and put a lot of them up in the field. So how do you figure that out? Are you looking through like flower magazines and stuff or how figure do you get out? inspired to figure out, hey, I should put something like this at the farm and where to put it at the farm? Um, Actually, the, the farm's a little tough for me to figure it out. Usually I can look at a space and kind of get an idea automatically like, oh, I definitely know what I want to do here. But here... I, I can do that, but a lot of times I can't do what I want because of the layout and the water and the drainage. And, you know, it's a little interesting. Farming is a little different than gardening, like at home. So, you know, I don't, I don't want to have straight rows of things, but for efficiency, you have to. You're going to, you know, you can't plant 150, um, you know, let's say zinnias, for example. You can't plant 150 zinnias all sporadically throughout the field so that when I need to go harvest them, I'm running around and it's taking me five times the, you know, five times the amount of time I would need to just harvest them if they were in one row. It's not, it's not smart. And, and, you know, time when you're farming is super important. It plays into your profitability a lot. So I get it. You know, you do have to have efficiency and you do have to set things up well. Um, I tend to jump in and make decisions before I know <laughs> what to do. So you do? I do. When? I do, all the time. Oh. I even do that in my home guards. I move stuff around because the thing is, you never know what's gonna grow really well and the size, like the size potential of things, something that may grow well here may grow six feet at my house. You know, it just depends. It depends how much sun, it depends how happy, it depends, on, you know, the soil condition. So I have to really, you have to learn that. It takes years to learn your space and your soil and something that may grow two feet and it says it's gonna grow two feet on the tag, you get it home or you get it to the farm and you have full sun all day long, it's gonna grow three feet and then, and you have to account for that. So it's gonna be a learning process for years here. 
It feels like our learning curve is a U-turn. <laughs> sometimes. You know? Sometimes. Sometimes it's a full circle. So what's the deal with the tulips? You were trying to tell me that oh, you didn't out. seem to be thrilled to death. No, do you want to see what's happening? Yes, let's figure this out. Because I planted only like five inches deep, um, those warm spells kickstart the tulips into growing and it needs a full dormant period, like months of cold in order to, to sprout and grow super tall stems. Well, don't they have like dwarf tulips? I can tell you when you were growing for cut flowers, I did not order a single dwarf tulip. I ordered long stem tulips. So that's not even part of the question. Yeah, well, can't you identify them as stubby tulips or what? Sure, do you wanna buy them? Just give them a different name. You wanna buy them? Well, you're always selling weird stuff. Just convince some woman that they're like, you know, from you know raised by pygmies or something i don't know I, i'm i'm just okay cutting my losses at this point and you know what hopefully with the cold coming like thursday and the snow maybe they will extend like you can put like a shade cloth over these and try to get them to extend um you know and lean and reach for the sun but i i can't be bothered i, I learned a lesson you know what i did learn though the tulips in the crates, they started after this row. Like these guys started growing first. The tulips in the crates started growing after these guys. They were in the barn the whole time through February and most of March. And what I learned was they it, being in the barn, they actually kind of um, were protected from the warm ups. You know, that these guys experienced. They didn't have that because they were in the barn. So it was less fluctuation of temperature. And those are really, they're taller than these right now. And they're out there. So I will definitely grow in tulips. I mean, in crates. What and about Botox? What? What about Botox? I don't Would want that them, make... I don't want them short and fat. I want them tall and thin. Botox does not do that. Huh. And I know where you're going with that. I know you too well. I Perfect. still have tulip jokes. Yeah, I'm sure you do. And if you step on my peonies, you yeah. better have some major, major comebacks because I'm going to be pissed. Yeah, well. My, my, my um, peonies are coming up, though. She's a meanie when it comes to her peonies. Mm. Peony meanie. But they're coming up. They're beautiful. These guys didn't care. They're like, okay. Um, they're going to be a few years anyway before they establish. But... It looks good, like most of them are, are coming up and sprouting. I can see all the little heads coming up. And I'm glad I planted every three feet like I was supposed to. Yeah. Uh. That, are you kidding? There's peony farmers. That's all they do is farm peonies. And they have long, like you can save peony blooms. Like you, um, you can harvest them when they have that nice soft marshmallowy stage right before they open. And you can wrap them in saran wrap, put them in your fridge and a month later, pull them out to use for an event later on. They store really well. So that's that's the benefit. And they're perennial, so you don't have to invest like tulips every year. Well, is it possible what's happening to the tulips could happen to the peonies and no. you end up with itsy bitsy teeny peonies or? Oh my God, you are just on the ball. Well, are you proud of yourself? I'm just. Are you? Are you proud of yourself? I'm asking the questions that people want to answer. I don't even know what you're asking. I think you're just making jokes. No, I'm not. No, but those will not. Have, that will not happen to the peonies. Although peonies do need a cold period over winter, like they need a dormancy period over winter to bloom. So, but they're not going to be short because of it. These guys are just like they're panicking because they've been warmed up super early and. Unfortunately, they're on a mission right now. They, they're rushing to bloom, which is not good. So we won't have any pygmy peonies on our property. No, the peonies will be fine. Although it's interesting that that peony bed is up way faster than this one. I think we, we buried these pretty deep. <laughs> You're not supposed to bury your peonies pretty deep. You're supposed to, you know, right an inch or two below the soil so that way they bloom. Otherwise, they won't bloom. So if we planted peony roots too deep and they don't bloom, that would be our fault. So we'll have to make sure, we have to keep an eye on this bed over here. 
We might have to take away some soil. You should write romantic novels. You just have a way with words. Oh, I'm sure. I got a lot of words. They may not all go together, but. Yeah. So anything else you want to say? What else are we doing? During oh, I'm gonna this get update? Some, I'm going to get some press in. I'm going to get some nigella in today. And hope so, for the best. I'm going to learn. You all are going to learn with me because, you know, you can, you can know how to grow things, but it's a whole different ball game when you got a property that won't cooperate. So. And a husband. No, you, you actually have done well. You've done well this year. Hasn't even started yet. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. No. So far this year, you are totally tolerable. No, don't don't start buttering me up already. No, I, I don't butter you up. I don't got no reason to butter you up. No. I think I'm going part time this year. I don't think I can handle. I don't need you. There's no room. Oh. I only need you for rototilling. <laughs> You're gonna be a subcontractor. Good. I'm gonna so. be eating a lot of subs. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to just need you for like, you know, plowing up the land and making me more spots to grow because you know what, the more I plow up this year and get ready, the better the soil will be every year. So that's my goal. Take little bits, expand it, and then get to a point where I have enough growth space and I can't handle anymore. And I'm pretty much there now, but. Sounds like you need me to do the hard stuff. Yes. And we need to get these, oh, by the way, we need to get these um, raspberries in. So these were in the barn all winter. Like I never, I watered them what once in a video when we had snow. And look, would you like to see something? So this guy, this is Latham raspberry. Look, they're sending up all their, so oh my God, they're all coming up. Wow. Cool, so they're not dead. Oh my God, they're coming up. Yes, yeah, so you can over winter. This is good, this is learning. Let's check these. So what is the difference? I don't understand what the major difference with leaving something oh my God. to overwinter in the barn compared to outside. Um, because in there it'll freeze. It's unheated. But what you're doing, a lot of times when you're trying to overwinter stuff in pots, they'll tell you to bury it in the ground. Like so it, it freezes and thaws with the land and it drains properly. A lot of times when you leave stuff in pots, it'll freeze if you just have it on the ground like that it'll freeze and the ground is frozen so what happens is on a nice day the pot will actually start to melt and thaw but there's no place for the water to drain out so a lot of times it rots the plants and the roots rot in the pot because there's no place for it to drain um and it's like it gets major fluctuations all winter long if you're if it's 60 degrees in february those are going to thaw in a day and then it's like, oh, it'll wake up the plant and then it's gonna freeze again when it goes back to normal winter and they're gonna die. So there's a lot of variables with stuff like that um, and overwintering in pots. But if you put them in the barn where the temperature doesn't fluctu fluctuate as much and even though they freeze, you're not, you're not like leaving them open to all the water and freezing in the pot. Like they have just enough to make it over the winter and you're not putting all this excess moisture and there it's frozen so the roots are sitting in water it's just a little bit of added protection in there um and they're all hardy you know down to our zone but look this is exciting so this is the second thing did i answer your question uh yeah i got you, <laughs> did, you <laughs> did you get more than you bargained for so they're kind of like hibernating in the barn it's easier they don't get woken yes. up they're dormant and they don't have to you know sit in a bunch of water yeah. and wait for everything to thaw before it drains and they don't rot they yeah. basically will rot and they they're subject to thawing and freezing and thawing and freezing which is not really great for perennials and pots it's like if you pee the bed you're gonna wake up so the ones inside the barn yeah. are gonna be you know <laughs> it's like having pampers on i guess i guess yes well two ply at yeah. least <laughs> yes all right you i got are, you, you are strange well this one looks like it rotted so i lost one but look these are little lupins that i started from seed see these little guys they look how beautiful so a lot of these were these were in the barn also totally dried out oh i lost a couple though but you know what i have a couple 
So you potted them right before these winter, right? No, these these I had in the beginning of last year. And I actually what I should do is go put them in because this is perfect time for them. Like they would do better now that they've woken up. Like this guy's like, okay, it's time. And it's in a black pot. It's not gonna take a lot for this to now subject itself to freezing temperatures. If it was in the ground, even though we get freezing temperatures coming, the ground has heat. Like it's absorbing heat right now. And at night, things that are closer and underground are gonna fare better than things in pots. Make sense? I don't know if I'm making sense, but you get the gist of what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, look, and another one. And I think you should go plant those right now. Look, I, I, sh I really should because you know what? They really want to be alive. And you should do it without me because I got other things to do around here. These, however, weeds are alive. Isn't it amazing? Weeds, they can, they can survive anything. Can you ever relax as a flower farmer? This, I or? am relaxing. Today's um, today is beautiful. Really? I'm not really doing much. Wait. Not yet. I'm sure that's about to change. These are alive. Mm. So these are double gold. My gold raspberries are alive. She's dangerous because she can be very spontaneous. I, I that I can yes. My question is, should I just take out those tulips? Because I know they already have No, those. give them a chance. Don't give up on them. Well, they're unusable. Oh. Cool. If you, if you want me to help, I... Emma Lou, I'd love for you to help me anytime you want to help me. So how long does a tulip live anyway? So I take its head off or until it dies back naturally. Well, one of two things. One so of two life's things. short enough. Don't Where should I put these get guys? get the short end of the stick twice. I don't See, know. See, that's the problem. I can't start planting stuff. And then I'm going to be like, oh, I wish I hadn't put them there. That's what I do a lot. I know. So we'll have a temporary row of stuff. How about this is the temporary row? How many are there? There are only eight, my love. So you can really replant mostly anything, right? Other than annuals, yes. You can replant, well, you can replant perennials, raspberry bushes. I noticed our asparagus waved the white flag. Yeah. Right inside the door you just closed. So go around. Yeah, they don't look too good. You're not even looking at them. Where are they? They're over here. Oh. Remember we marked them with the wood? You think they could come back? I don't know. Maybe it's too early for them. But there are some that are still in there, so who knows? Maybe we'll get a couple of spears here and there. I know, it's getting windy. I thought we were going to try to fly a kite today. So go in, grab the kite. You and Blake go fly the kite while I plant. No, but I want to help. Well, but I want to help. I want to help so, I can, so we can go to Dairy Queen quicker. You don't want to fly a kite? No. Okay, fine. Wow. Good, I'll go ice fly cream. a kite. Ice cream works. You and Blake fly a kite? I'm going to go get to these guys.